My name is Carl Kriego, and I am the uh, instructor for the CFA Level 1 Review courses here at NYSSA. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to prepare for the CFA Level 1 exam. Uh, there are 18 study sessions for the Level 1 examination. The CFA Institute believes that you should study at least 15 to 20 hours per study session. So your total study time will be somewhere between 270 to 360 hours of prep. That means that you're going to have to dedicate a lot of time out of your schedule to prepare for this exam. And we're going to give you some tips on how to begin to prepare for the test. As soon as you've registered with the CFA Institute, you receive your study materials, and you should begin immediately to be review a topic area. I recommend that you start with ethics. Ethics is a one where uh, there's not a lot of math involved with it. As a matter of fact, there's none. And it's something that you probably have some experience with through work. And you can then begin to look at the standards of professional conduct or code of ethics and uh, see what your requirements are under that as a CFA candidate. Do not memorize the standard numbers within the Code of Ethics. You're going to have to concentrate on how to apply them to factual situations. Another thing is to use, be able to use the calculator required for the exam. There are only two calculators you can use on the test, the HP 12C and the TI BA 2 Plus. Now, we do offer courses here at NYSSA on how to use these two calculators. You can check our website for the time uh, of those offerings of those courses in here. Another area where people have some difficulty you should be looking at is quant and financial uh, reporting and analysis. The calculators are used a lot in quant, so you're getting double coverage there with that. And with financial reporting and analysis, you need to have a good understanding of basic financial accounting. So you need to review debits and credits, um, income statement, balance sheet statement of cash flow. Uh, this will give you a solid foundation then to do the applications that are required in the curriculum itself. And again, with regard to these, we're offering one-day courses here uh, as background for both quantitative methods and financial reporting and analysis to prepare you for the material that you need for the CFA curriculum. Another area, and one that is very important as well, is to always check for errata. This is especially true with the CFA Institute. Uh, they have already posted about a page of errata for the curriculum for uh, next year. And it is uh, imperative that you check with this because you'll be reading and then something, a number will come up and you don't understand it. And that's simply because it's a typographical error uh, and uh, needs to be corrected. So please make sure that you do that from time to time. Uh, another thing you can get into that would be uh, useful is a study group. Check with your local society to determine if they're forming study groups. We do this here at NYSSA as a service to CFA candidates. And it is a way of getting together with other people, uh, going over notes, going over the um, curriculum, and uh, filling in gaps that you may have in your knowledge that someone else may be an expert in. So these are the key things that you can do to begin to prepare for the exam. You should start now. I can't overemphasize the fact that you should begin now with your preparation. And if you start with something in here, if you don't want to do ethics right now, that's fine. If you're weak in quant or financial accounting, you could do some basic review there. Uh, or uh, go to an area that you're strong in. If you're an equity analyst, read the section on equity analysis. If you're in fixed income, read the study sessions on fixed income. 
if you like portfolio management or had a course in portfolio management perhaps in undergraduate or graduate education, read the material on that. Be careful though as you go through this material. Look at the LOSs. Now the LOSs, they stand for Learning Outcome Statement. They are at the beginning of each reading. And it tells you that what you should focus on in that particular reading. The examination questions will be drawn from the areas covered by those learning outcome statements. So you want to focus in on that material that is covered by the LOS. So when you're looking at a study session or reading for a study session, read first the LOSs. Do the reading, and go back and check to see have I covered uh, what I've outlined or what I've uh, highlighted the material that covers each and every one of those LOSs. Look at the command words. If it says calculate, expect to do a calculation on the exam covering that topic area, that LOS. If it says describe, you're not really going to be describing, but you may have to apply uh, a concept to a particular situation. So the exam will basically be probably between 20 and 30 percent quantitative questions, calculations, and somewhere between 70 to 80 percent will be qualitative like questions. So be careful. What do I need to calculate? What formulas do I need to memorize? What formulas do I just need to have a conceptual basis on? And this will also help you with your study program. One of the other things that you can do that would be a big help is within financial reporting and analysis, we have ratios that you are expected to know, such as the current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities. You can put those on note cards and then begin the process of memorizing those. You will need those for the exam, most likely in conceptual type questions as opposed to the actual calculating of many of these ratios. So uh, another point within the financial reporting analysis as you go through it, make sure that you understand the differences and similarities between what U.S. GAAP says, which is the accounting rules for the United States versus IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards because they would probably ask questions, compare, contrast in a multiple choice format. Remember for the level one exam, uh, there will be 240 multiple choice questions, uh, 120 in the three hour morning session, 120 in the three hour afternoon session. So you've got about 90 seconds to answer each question. This should give you a good foundation to begin your preparation for the program it is essential, as I've said again, and I can't overemphasize this enough, please begin now. You can't wait until the very end. There's simply too much material to go through to wait uh, at a month or a month and a half before the exam to begin to prepare. This is a race that goes to the slow person. That is to say the one who chips away at it each and every day or each and every week. Uh, and this is what you need to do now. I wish you the very best with your study program and uh, hope that you'll be successful in it in the coming year. Thank you.